Fox presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Holiday greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I trust you've all had a perfect Christmas. Wonderful presents, uh, too much dinner, and lots of merry company. But sometime during the day, I'm sure you've said, Christmas really belongs to the children. And so, before they have to leave their toys and cowboy suits, we want to tell them a story. And you'll want to listen, too, because it's The Wizard of Oz, one of those wonderful Oz books that we've all loved since they were written by L. Frank Baum 50 years ago. metro golden Mayor turned The Wizard of Oz into a screen classic and a lovely little singer into a star, one of the most talented stars of Hollywood, Judy Garland. Audiences have asked her to be brought back again and again to be entranced by Judy's performance and those fascinating Oz characters. The Scarecrow, the Tin Woodsman, the Cowardly Lion, and the delightful little people, the Munchkins. Now it's off to The Wizard of Oz, starring Judy Garland as Dorothy. This is the story of a girl named Dorothy who lives with her aunt and uncle on a farm way out in Kansas. Her dearest friend is her dog, Toto. But Dorothy has other friends, too. The farmhands, for instance. Zeke and Honk and Hickory. Hey, what's your hurry, honey? What's wrong? It's Toto, Hickory. Toto. Toto? Something wrong with that dog? Well, he looks fine to me. Well, he he is, Zeke, but he almost wasn't. Miss Gulch hit him just because he gets in her garden and chases her nasty old cat. Oh, sure, honey, sure. Only we're busy, see? I got them hogs to get in. Now, look, Dorothy, you just ain't using your head about that mean old Miss Gulch. You'd think you didn't have a brain at all. Hunk, I have so got brain. Well, use a man. When you're walking home with Toto, just keep away from Miss Gulch's place. Your head ain't made of straw, you know. Gosh, Dorothy, that Miss Gulch ain't nobody to be afraid of. Have a little courage, that's all. Courage, Steve? Why, sure. You know, like like me. Well, look who's talking. You, courage. There ain't a man in the county who scares easier than you. Well, well, uh, that's a fine thing to say. Look out, Steve, that pig's gonna bite you. Where? What pig? Help, help! <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> now, cut that out. Scaring a man half to death like that. Here now, here. What's all this jabber weapon when there's work to be done? It's about Toto, Eddie M. Miss Gulf says she's going to go and get the sheriff and then... Hank, I thought a... you and Hickory were supposed to be fixing that wagon. Oh, we are, Miss Gale. Hammer that ranch, Hickory. And feed them hogs, Zeke, before they worry themselves into anemia. Yes, ma'am. Now then, child, what's your trouble? Eddie M., really, do you know what Miss Gulf said she was going to do to Toto? She said she was going to... There gonna... you go again imagining things. You know, you always get yourself into a fret over nothing. Oh, but this time... Now, you just help us all out this afternoon. Find yourself a place where you won't get into any trouble. I gotta get back in the house. Yes, Auntie Em. <sighs> Come on, Toto. <laughs> Do you suppose there is such a place, Toto? Where there isn't any trouble? There must be. Not a place you can get to by a boat or a train, but it's far, far away. Behind the moon, beyond the rain. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a that I heard of once in a lullaby. you dare to dream really do come true. Some 
someday I'll wish upon a star And wake up where the clouds are far behind me Where troubles melt like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops That's where Miss Gar, surely you don't mean that. Why, that little that dog... That dog's a just... menace to the community. I'm taking that animal to the sheriff and make sure he's destroyed. Destroyed? Oh, no, no, please. You must... Uh, uh, honey, uh, we uh, didn't know you were there. Toto didn't know he was doing anything wrong. I'm the one who ought to be punished, Uncle Henry. I let him go in her garden. There's a law protecting folks against animals like that. No, no, please. Well, we can't go against the law, Doris. Now you're being smart. Give him to me. no. I won't let you take him. I won't. You're a witch, a wicked old witch. Doris. Oh, please, Annie. M, please. Oh, I got him at last. And there's nothing any of you can do about it. Toto. Toto. Now, come on, Dorothy. Cheer up, honey. Please, honey. I don't feel like talking. Not to anybody. Not even to Toto? Oh, you know he's gone. You know Miss Gulch took him away. I know something else, too, honey. Toto must have jumped out of her basket and run back home because there's a little brown and white dog looking all over for you. Oh, oh, Toto. Toto, you're back. Toto, Toto. You came back to me, Toto. Oh, I thought you were dead. I, I... They'll be coming after you. Miss Gulch and the sheriff, maybe. We've got to run away. Now, Toto, or no one will ever find us or, or, or take you away again. Yes, Toto, we've got to run away. It's getting dark, Toto. I, I think maybe there's a storm coming. But we'll just keep going, won't we? We're not afraid. It's it's just like Zeke said. Courage. I see what you mean. A wagon. A horse and a wagon and, and a man. And there's a big sign on the wagon. Wait, I think I can see what it says. Professor Marvel. Acclaimed by the crown heads of Europe. Let him read your past, present, and future in his crystal. Well, who might you be? Uh, I guess it's all right, Toto. He... He looks like a nice man. Well, if you're not going to tell me who you are, suppose I tell you. But how can you? <laughs> Professor Marvel knows all tells all. Your past, present, and future for 25 cents, a quarter of a dollar. Uh, two bits, if you prefer. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can afford it. Oh, so your name's Dorothy, is it? How did you know that? Well, on the one hand, perhaps I saw you in my crystal, and on the other hand, perhaps a fellow named Zeke passed by a while ago looking for you. Oh, I see. Uh, but don't you think for one minute I couldn't have figured it out for myself why Professor Marvel and his magic crystal have amazed royalty and peasantry alike the world over? Oh, please, Professor. Can't we go with you and see all the crowned heads of Europe? Oh, do you know any? Uh, oh, uh, you, you, you mean uh, the sign on my wagon? Uh, I... 
I don't suppose you could take just a, a little look in your magic crystal for me. For nothing, I mean. Matter of fact, young lady, I already have. Oh, just practicing, you understand. And you know what I saw? What? A woman. Tears in her eyes. Careworn. A woman looking for someone. And her name is... Uh... Uh, Auntie M? Kindly allow me to supply the answer. Her name is Annie M. Someone has almost broken her heart. Me? Well, someone she loved very much. And then just before the crystal went dark, I, I saw her put her hand over her heart and drop, drop down on the floor. Oh, no. No. You don't suppose she could really be sick, do you? Oh, I, I've got to go home right away. Go home? I thought you were going along with me. Oh, but I've got to get to her right away. Toto, come on, Toto. We're going up. Goodbye, Professor, and thank you. But don't waste any time. There's a windstorm blowing up. Oh, poor little kid. Hope she gets home all right. through the sky, barns and buggies, and there goes our chicken roost. Toto, we're caught in the cyclone. We're right up inside the middle of the cyclone. What? But there's old Mr. Gallagher in his rowboat. Mr. Gallagher! Howdy, Miss Garth. He's trying to breathe. He ain't it. And Uncle Henry Pepper. Bossy! Bossy! I, I don't understand this at all. Things are flying around so fast that I can... I can... Look! Miss Gouch! Now she's on a broomstick. She is a witch. Don't worry, Toto. I won't let her. We stopped moving, Toto. We're standing still. Oh, we can't stand still up in the middle of the air. We're going to fall. We are falling. We're falling. We're falling. We're falling. We've landed. But where? Where, where are we? Oh, it's a regular little village. And look, houses and streets and trees and fountains. <coughs> yes, you're quite right. That is our house over there. We must have bounced out when we landed. But what place is this? <coughs> I have a feeling we're being watched. I have another feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Well, we must be over the rainbow. <coughs> Toto, look. There's a big bubble coming down the street, and, and there's someone inside it. A lady, and she's stepping out of it. Oh, now I know we're not in Kansas. Tell me, please, are you a good witch or a bad witch? Me? Oh, I'm, I'm not a witch at all. I'm Dorothy Gale from Kansas. Oh. Well, I am a little muddled. The munchkins just summoned me because... Uh, munchkins? You happen to be standing in the very center of their village, you know. And uh, they sent for you? Because some new witch has just dropped a house on the Wicked Witch of the East. See? Over there. Oh, but that's our farmhouse from, from Kansas. Now look where I point my wand. <gasps> two red slippers. Exactly. Two red slippers protruding from under the farmhouse. All that's left of the Wicked Witch of the East. And since it's your farmhouse, obviously you're responsible. Oh, you've made the munchkins very happy, my dear. If, uh, if you please... What are munchkins? The little people who live in this land. It's munchkin land, and you are now their national heroine. And who are you? Why, I'm Glinda, of course, the Witch of the North. Witch? But you're beautiful. Thank you. You see, only bad witches are ugly, and I'm a very good witch. Now, suppose I call the munchkins. Come out, come out, wherever you are, and meet the young lady who well, Munchkin, have you nothing to say to her? Where's the mayor? Oh, there you are. Uh, first of 
about, Miss Dorothy? A little floral tribute. Oh, what beautiful flowers. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, there will be, of course, a parade and general celebration with a brass band and a regiment of cavalry. Meanwhile, oh, let the joyous news be spread. The wicked old witch at last is dead. <laughs> Little pretty, I can cause accidents too. Aren't you forgetting the ruby slippers? The slippers. My sister's slippers. There they are. Still on her feet over there. Well, I'll just take them. Just a moment, if you please. Ruby slippers, slippers red. Leave the feet of she who's dead. I summon my authority and bid you serve Miss Dorothy. The slippers. What are you doing to them? Now they're on my feet. You give them back to me. Never. There they are, and there they'll stay. You nasty little girl. They're of no use to you. Don't be frightened of her, darling. You stay out of this slender. I'll fix you as well. Rubbish. You have no power here. Be gone before somebody drops a house on you, too. Very well. I'll bide my time. As for you, my fine lady... You heard what she said. Be gone. I'll get you yet, my pretty. And your little dog, too. <laughs> Away, broomstick! Away! <gasps> It's all right, Munchkin. Don't hide your faces. She's gone. <laughs> now then, my dear. The sooner you get out of ours, the safer you'll sleep. Oh, I'd give anything to get out of ours. But how? Which is the way back to Kansas? Kansas? The only person who might know would be the great and wonderful Wizard of Oz himself. The Wizard of Oz? Is he good or is he wicked? Oh, very good but very mysterious. He lives far off in the Emerald City. Uh, did you by any chance bring your broomstick with you? Uh, no, I'm afraid I didn't. Well, then you'll have to walk. The munchkins will see you safely to the border. And remember, never let those ruby slippers off your feet, or you'll be at the mercy of the wicked witch of the West. But, but how do I start for the Emerald City? All you have to do is follow that yellow brick road. Help her, munchkins. The yellow brick road. Helpers, attention! Follow the yellow brick road! Follow the yellow brick road! Follow the yellow brick road! Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road! Yeah. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of a whiz, if ever a whiz there was. If ever, oh, ever a whiz there was, the wizard of Oz is one because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. Oh. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz! In a few moments, we'll bring you Act Two of The Wizard of Oz. And now, here is our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, to give us the Lux Radio Theater's movie news of the week. Tonight, John, it's the new Howard Hughes production, Vendetta, starring a lovely newcomer to Hollywood. She's Faith Demerg, and she's been given just the role her dark, exotic beauty calls for. This RKO picture tells the story of a family feud in old-time Corsica, and Faith plays the girl who vows to avenge her father's murder. Quite an intense melodrama, Libby. Isn't that a terrific set they built for the dueling scene? Oh, yes, indeed. No California landscape could quite convey the bleakness of that wild Corsican country. So they built the whole thing on a soundstage. Faith Domergue is photographed in dark costumes throughout. Of course, they set off her startling beauty all the more. 
There's a highly dramatic, uh, exciting quality about her acting, too. Well, she's quite a perfectionist, you know. Spent years of study before attempting her first screen role. And, John, Faith Demerig is a perfectionist about beauty, too. Naturally, her skin has to look soft and smooth in the close-ups. That's why she depends on daily facials with Lux Toilet Soap. She says it's a care that really works. Lux Soap is just right to protect delicate skin, Libby. No wonder so many famous stars say they wouldn't be without this gentle soap. Yes, John. Active lather does wonders for the skin. It's so easy to take a Lux Soap facial, too. You just smooth the rich lather well in, rinse with warm water, follow with a quick cold rinse, and pat with a soft towel to dry. It works like a charm to give your complexion quick, new beauty. Yes, Libby, that's a tip for smart women everywhere. For thorough, protecting care, there's nothing finer than Lux Toilet Soap. When you see Faith Domergue in Howard Hughes' exciting new picture, Vendetta, notice the smooth perfection of her skin. You'll want to try her daily active lather facial. So why not get Hollywood's own beauty soap tomorrow? Remember, nine out of ten screen stars use fragrant white Lux Toilet Soap. Now, Mr. William Keeley, our producer. Act two of The Wizard of Oz, starring Judy Garland as Dorothy. With the magic slippers on her feet, her dog Toto at her heels, and the little munchkins marching on ahead, Dorothy is on her way to The Wizard of Oz. They've reached the border of Munchkinland, and the little people have waved goodbye and disappeared. Well, Toto, now what? Nap. We're still on the yellow brick road, but now it goes in two different directions. Which way do we go? Pardon me, but that way's a very nice way. Who, who said that? <laughs> oh, don't be silly, Toto. That's just a scarecrow in the cornfield. Scarecrows don't talk. On the other hand, that way is very pleasant also. Why, he did talk. Is there anything so unusual about that? Well, yes, there is. And why do you shake your head? I mean... Both yes and no at the same time. Oh, that's my trouble. I never can make up my mind about anything. <laughs> oh? The fact is, I haven't got a brain. Take a look at my head, you see? It's straw. Just straw like the rest of me. But how can you talk if you don't have a brain? Oh, some people without brains do an awful lot of talking. <laughs> don't they? Yes, I guess you're right. Oh, what's he doing, your dog? Toto, why, he's licking your hand. Oh, that's what I thought. I... I guess I don't scare him, huh? <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah, I can't even scare a crow. They come from miles around. They pick off my straw for their nest. It's not at all flattering. <laughs> I'm, I'm a failure just because I haven't got a brain. Well, what would you do with a brain if you had one? Do? Why, if I had a brain, I could... I could... I could while away the hours Confer and with the flowers Consulting with the rain and my head, I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching If I only had a brain I'd unravel every riddle for any individual In trouble or in pain With the thoughts you'd be thinking you could be another Lincoln If you only had a brain Oh, I could tell you why The ocean's near the shore I could think of things I never thought before And then I'd sit and think some more I would not be just a nothing My head all full of stuff and my heart all full of pain And perhaps I'd deserve you and be even worthier of you If I only had a brain Wonderful! Just imagine a scarecrow singing and dancing. Why, if our scarecrow back in Kansas could do that... What's Kansas? Well, that's where Toto and I come from. And I want to get back there so badly that I'm going all the way to the Emerald City to get the Wizard of Oz to help me. A wizard? Do you think if I went along, he could give me some brains, maybe? Oh, I think you'd better stay here. I've got a witch mad at me, and you might get into trouble. Oh, but I'm not afraid of a witch. I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, except maybe a lighted match. Well, since you're made out of straw, I can hardly blame you for that. Oh, won't you take me with you, please? Of course I will. Gladly. Oh, Ray, I'm going to leave the cornfield. And see a wizard, I hope. <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of wizard. Wizard. 
Scarecrow. Hmm? Huh? Do you see what I see? Well, not knowing what you see, how can I say that what I see is what you... Oh, wait a minute. Look, over there. That's just what I mean at the edge of the forest. It's a man. A man made out of tin and holding an axe. Come on, Dorothy. Be careful, please. You too, Tony. Look here. Here on the grass. An oil can. Did you say something? Oh, no. He did. Oil can! He said oil can. He wants me to oil him. My mouth! He said his mouth. All right, just a minute now. Oh, my goodness! Oh, joy! Oh, bless! I can talk again! I can talk! Oh, oh, my arms, please. My elbows. Oh, oh that's wonderful, wonderful. A- am, I, am I doing it right? Oh, yes, yes. What a relief. I've held this axe up for ages. But my goodness, how did you ever get like this in the first place? Oh, well, uh, about a year ago, I was chopping that tree when suddenly it began to rain. I rusted so solid, I haven't been able to move since. Well, you're perfect now. Perfect. Just bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. Beautiful. What an echo. You see? Empty. The tinsmith forgot to give me a heart. No No heart. heart. No heart. Oh. All hollow. And believe me, not having a heart, well, presents problems. When a man's an empty kettle, he should be on his metal, and yet I'm torn apart. Just because I'm presuming that I could be kind of human if I only had a heart. I'd be tender, I'd be gentle, and awful sentimental regarding love and art. I'd be friends with the sparrows and the boy that shoots the arrows if I only had a heart. Picture me, a balcony above, a voice sings low, wherefore art thou, Romeo? I hear a beat, how sweet just to register emotion, jealousy, devotion, and really feel the part. I'd stay young and chipper, and I'd lock it with a zipper if I only had a heart. Well, I certainly see what you mean. You were whispering, you and him, while I was singing. Well, we were just wondering if you'd care to go with us to the Emerald City. Then you could ask the Wizard of Oz for a heart. But suppose he wouldn't give me one when we got there. Oh, but he will. He must. We've come such a long way already. Ah, you call that long, my pretty? Why, you've just begun. (laughs) Who's that? Who's laughing? The witch, the wicked witch. Well, my two fine gentlemen... Helping the little lady along, are you? Well, stay away from her. Oh, oh yeah? I'll stuff a mattress with you, you straw man. And you, I'll use that tin carcass for a beehive. <laughs> Gosh, what a witch. Want to play ball, Scarecrow? Well, here. No, no, look out, it's a ball of fire. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> stand still, stand still. I'll stamp out the fire with my ten feet. <laughs> Yeah, you can move now. Oh, much obliged, Tin Woods. Oh, yes, we both are. But I'm still not afraid of her. I'll see that you get safely to the wizard now, whether I get a brain or not. Stuff a mattress with me. Ha! Mm. And I'll see that you reach the wizard whether I get a heart or not. Oh, you're the best friends anybody ever had. And it's funny, but I feel as if I'd known you all the time. You're just like Hunk and, and, and Hickory. But I... I couldn't have known you, could I? I certainly don't see how. I guess it doesn't really matter. We know each other now, all right. That's right. We do. Then to us, to us. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of Oz. Uh, d- does anybody happen to know where we are? Uh, that's easy. We're in a forest. And I don't like it. 
It's so dark and, and creepy. <laughs> Toto, Toto, come back. Stay on the path. He sees something behind that bush. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so do I. I think I do, too. It's a lion. A lion. He's coming this way. Stay where you are. Uh... <laughs> Put him up. Put up your fist. Uh... I'll fight you with one paw tied behind my back. I'll fight you standing on one foot. Stand up and fight. Uh, I'll swallow you first, you little peewee dog. Shame on you. You let that little dog alone. Let him alone. <laughs> no. Why did you have to slap me for? <laughs> I didn't bite him. <laughs> Look, the lion. He's crying. Well, you tried to bite him. Well, you didn't have to go and hit me, did you? <laughs> Is my nose bleeding? Oh, of course not. My goodness, you're nothing but a great big coward. <laughs> you're right, I'm a coward. I haven't any courage at all. <laughs> Do you suppose the wizard would help him, too? I don't see why not. Why don't you come with us, Lion? We're on our way to see the Wizard of Oz and get the Tin Woodsman a heart. And him a brain. And I'm sure he could give you some courage. <laughs> well, wouldn't you feel degraded to be seen in the company of a cowardly lion? <laughs> I would. <laughs> no, of course not. Here, you, you better take my handkerchief. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been so nice to me. Now, please stop crying. I'll try. But, but how did you get this way in the first place, Lion? Well, if you can spare the time, it it was like the yes, it's sad, believe me, Missy, when you're born to be a sissy without the vim and bird. But I could show my prowess, be a lion, not a mouse, if I only had the nerve. I'm afraid there's no denying, I'm just a dandelion, a fate I don't deserve. I'd be brave as a blizzard. I'd be gentle as a lizard. I'd be clever as a gizzard. If the wizard is a wizard who will serve, then I'm sure to get a brain, a heart. Uh -oh. The nerve. Then let's be on our way without any more delay. That's just what I was going to say. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. We're up to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We're here, he is the wizard of Oz. Everyone is here, the wizard of Oz. Ha-ha! Little do they know I, too, was hiding in the forest. I'll still get those ruby slippers. And then my power will be the greatest in Oz. And woe to those who try to stop me. I all proved it away. Look, everybody, look. Emerald City, oh, at last, at last. Emerald City, eh? Gosh, it's all green. And with turrets and towers, and look how big it is. But how do we get in? This wall goes all around everything. Most well, certainly does. Look at the top of the wall. Oh, who are you? That's my question. Who are you? Well, if you'll let us in, we'll be glad to tell you. Let you in, huh? Well, you look harmless enough. Open the gates of Emerald City. <laughs> We can go in. The gates are opening. Well, that's the general idea of gates, isn't it? <laughs> Kindly step forward and state your business. Uh, we want to see the wizard, please. The, 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 the wizard? Oh, but nobody can see the great Oz. Nobody's ever seen the great Oz. Even I have never seen him. Oh, please. The good witch of the north sent me here. Prove it. She's wearing the ruby slippers she gave me, you see? Well, bust my buttons. So she is. 
Then you'll take us to the wizard? There you go again. Wizard. Uh, well, uh, well, yeah, of course, uh, wizard. Uh, meanwhile, you'd all better wait. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, well, what is it now? Good grief, man, can't you? I no one can serve the public square. Uh, who who wants The me? entire population of Emerald City. There's something going on, sir, and I don't like the look. No, no, no. What's everyone so excited about? Don't you see? I'm there in the sky. Huh? Well, that's quite a trick, isn't it? Dorothy, it's sky riding. Letters of black smoke all across the sky. Well, well, what does it say? It's the Wicked Witch. It says, it says, surrender, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy? Dorothy! 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 The Wicked will explain it. Now, the great and powerful Oz has the situation well in hand, I hope, so you can all go home. Go on, scatter. You draw flies. But if you please, sir, we want to see the wizard right away. Certainly not. Not nobody, not no how. But she's Dorothy. The witch is Dorothy? Nope, not even you. Oh, please. Please, it's the, it's the only way I'll ever be able to get home. Not nobody, not no how. Annie M was so good to me, and I never appreciated it. Running away, hurting her feelings. What's that? Professor Marvel said she was sick. She may be dying, and it's, it's all my fault. <laughs> I'll get you to the wizard somehow. <laughs> He's crying, too. Oh, you see, I, I had an Aunt M once myself. Oh, this is all highly irregular, but just follow me. Gosh, he just left us in this chamber. It's so dark and echoey, huh? He said the wizard would be waiting for us. <laughs> I'm closing my eyes. Did you just... Tell me when it's all over. <laughs> Silence! Who was that? I am Paul, the great and powerful. But we, we can't see anybody. Silence! You shall never see me. But if you please, we, we must tell you something. Nobody ever tells me anything. I know everything. You, you're a little girl who wants to go home. And you, Tin Man? Yes, Your Honor. Clinking and clattering for the heart. And you? Me, your wizardry? A billowing beggar of both me breakfast who begged for a break. And you, Your Honor? Oh. He's fainted. Well, I, I had wake up. The wizard will be awfully mad. Oh, you, you know? ought to be ashamed of yourself. I am. I am. Poor cowardly lion like that when he came to you for help. Silence! The beneficent odds have every intention of granting your request, but you must first prove worthy. Oh, we will. We'll do anything. Very well. Bring me the broomstick of the wicked witch of the west. Oh, but, but if we do that, why, well, we'll have to kill her to get it. Bring me her broomstick and I'll grant your request. Well, what if she kills us first? <laughs> Silence! Spirit, Dorothy. Come on, Lion. We're not afraid. We'll get that old broomstick. <laughs> and they think I don't know about it. They think they'll take me by surprise. Ah, at last I'll have them in my power. The little girl, her nasty dog, and the magic ruby slippers. <laughs> In just a few moments, we'll bring you Act Three of The Wizard of Oz. 
I particularly want you to meet our guest for tonight, uh, Paula Stone, writer-producer for MGM Radio Attractions. She'll bring us news of the world premiere in Hollywood last Wednesday of Metro-Golden-Mare's great picture, The Magnificent Yankee. As commentator at the premiere, you interviewed the many stars who attended, didn't you, Paula? Yes, I did, Mr. Keeley. It was one of the most thrilling evenings I've experienced. Over a hundred stars were there. To cheer for Louis Calhoun and Anne Harding, of course. Oh, yes. Everyone was so enthusiastic about the picture. And the superb performance turned in by Louis Calhoun as Justice Holmes and Anne Harding as his devoted wife. There's a picture as rousing as a brass band. The distinguished career of one of our greatest men is presented in the authentic atmosphere of our nation's capital. Why, you actually feel the march of stirring events. It's an exciting treatment of our recent history, but it's also a beautiful love story. Yes, indeed. The deep attachment of Justice Holmes for his wife is something to warm the heart. Anne Harding brings dignity and beauty to her role in The Magnificent Yankee. And she's completely charming and very lovely, too. Of course, as you might expect, like so many famous stars I interview from time to time, she gives credit to Lux Care for her skin and just keeping it right for the cameras. Well, after all, Miss Stone, it's Hollywood's own beauty soap, you know. Oh, yes, Mr. Kennedy. And Lux Soap in the big bath size is just as popular. I know I wouldn't be without it. There's nothing more luxurious after a busy day than a refreshing Lux Soap bath. There's something special about the lather. Rich and creamy, even in hardest water. Yes, it leaves skin really fresh. Fragrant, too, with a nice, delicate perfume. No wonder screen stars prefer this satin-smooth bath cake. Thank you, Miss Paula Stone, for being here tonight. Now, here's a shopping hint for the ladies in our audience. Get the generous bath size Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. Enjoy its luxurious lather and delightful perfume. You'll discover why screen stars say it makes you sure of all over Lux loveliness. Nine out of ten famous Hollywood stars... Use fragrant white Lux toilet soap. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on Act Three of The Wizard of Oz, starring Judy Garland as Dorothy. Well, if Dorothy is ever to get back home to Kansas... And if I'm ever to have a brain... And me a heart... And me courage... Then Dorothy must first get the broomstick of the Wicked Witch and bring it back to The Wizard of Oz. But if the wizard knows everything... The Wicked Witch, unfortunately, knows quite a lot herself. Now, in her bleak and dismal castle, she gloats over a newly captured prisoner. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing, but it was so easy to capture you that I can't help it. At least my friends got away. Toto, too. What do I care about them? It's you I wanted. You and the magic ruby slippers. I had every warrior slave in this castle on the watch for you. Now give me those slippers. No, no. The good witch told me not to. Fool that I am. I should know the slippers will never come off as long as you're alive. You... you mean... Ah! Now, how shall I do it? I think I'll make up a special batch of poison. Yes, that ought to do it. Some nice, fresh poison. <laughs> Look, it's Dorothy's dog. <laughs> Ryan, look. Oh, we're goners now, all right. He'll lead the witch's soldiers right here to our hiding place. No, no, he's come to take us to Dorothy, up there in the castle. We can't fail her now, we can. I'll go. Witch or no witch, I'll tear him apart. I'll knock him cold. I may not come out alive, but I'm going in there. Oh, Ryan, that, that, that's wonderful. There's only one thing I want you fellas to do. What's that? <laughs> Talk me out of it. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't. Come what may, we're going to rescue Dorothy. All right, Toto, show us the way. This is the room. Toto snipped her out. Dorothy? Who, who is it? It's us. We've come to save you. Open the door. I can't. She's locked me in here. T 
medicine man, your axe, chop down the door. But that'll make a noise in the garden. Who cares about the guards? We'll save you, Dorothy. We'll save you. She'll be back any minute. Hurry, please. Here goes the door. Stand back, Dorothy. Oh, I knew you'd come. I knew it. And Toto, Toto. Oh, we'll have you out of this castle before you can say Jack Rowe. The the witch, the wicked witch. Kill the wicked witch. But I didn't mean to kill her. I I didn't know that water was... You don't understand. Now we're all free. She enslaved us. But now her spell over all of us is broken. Hey! All hail to Dorothy. The wicked witch is dead. Hey! 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 Oh, thank you. And if you don't mind, may I please have her broom? Here. Take it with you. Now we can go back to the wizard. And tell him the wicked witch is dead. Onward to Emerald City. She's gone where the government goes. I still can't believe my eyes. You've come back. Back to Emerald City. And we did exactly what the great Oz told us to do. Here. Here's the witch's broomstick. And now, if you don't mind taking us to the wizard... You we're... see, he promised us... Uh, uh, you, 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 you promised to all your broomstick. Oh, 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 what an unhappy situation. Unhappy? After all we've gone oh, through... Oh, I, I'm glad there's no one else around to hear this. Hear what? Oh, little girl, there is no great and powerful wizard of ours. That is, I am the wizard. But he spoke to us himself. I spoke to you. Oh, it was no great trick. A dark room, a few smoke powders. Your, your own imaginations did the rest. Why, you... you humbug. Exactly. Oh, you're a very bad man. Oh, no, my dear. I'm just a very bad wizard. <laughs> what about the heart you promised Tin Man? And Scarecrow's brain. Well, anybody can have a brain. That's a very mediocre commodity. Well, I don't have one. Then listen a moment. Back where I come from, we have great universities where men go to become deep thinkers. And when they come out, they know how to think just fine and with no more brains than you have. Why? But they have one thing you haven't got, a diploma. Therefore, by virtue of the authority in me vested by the Universitatis Committee, um, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of T.H.D., T.H.D. Doctor of Thinkology. Here's your diploma. Oh, oh, Scarecrow, how wonderful. But, but what about me? I'm still a coward, I think. Of course not. You are merely under the unfortunate delusion that because you run away from danger, you have no courage. A simple matter of confusing courage with wisdom. <laughs> oh, joy, oh, rapture, I've got a brain. <laughs> Back where I come from, lion... We have men who are called heroes. Yet they have no more courage than you have. But they do have one thing you haven't got. A medal. Medal? Therefore, for meritorious conduct and conspicuous bravery against wicked witches, I award you the Triple Cross. The Triple Cross? <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, it was nothing. <laughs> you are now a member of the Legion of Courage. As for you, my galvanized petitioner, you want a heart. You don't know how lucky you are not to have one. Hearts will never be practical until they can be made unbreakable. I still want one. Back where I come from, there are men who do nothing but good deeds all day long. And their hearts are no bigger than yours. 
They're called philanthropists. But they have one thing you haven't got, a testimonial. Testimonial? Therefore, in consideration of your kindness, I present you with this small token of our esteem and affection. A heart. It is a heart. Just remember that a heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved. Listen, <laughs> it ticks. My heart even ticks. It... But, but what about Dorothy? You, uh, you still want to go back to Kansas, hmm? Oh, I do. I do. I wish I could help you, child, but I can. You, you mean I, I'll never get home? But it, it, it's really rather pleasant here once you get to know the place. And we want you to stay, Dorothy. You see, we love you, you and Toto. And I love you, but what am I to do? What was that? Look what's coming. A bubble. Who's been blowing bubbles around here? Hey, there's somebody in it. It's Glinda. Glinda's a good witch. Oh, help me. Help me. But you don't need my help, child. You've always had the power to go back to Kansas. I have. Then why didn't you tell her before? Because she wouldn't have believed me. She had to learn by herself. Have you learned, Dorothy? Well, I, I think that that it wasn't enough just to want to see Uncle Henry and Auntie M. And it's that if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't look any further than my own backyard. Because if it isn't there, I never really lost it to begin with. Is that right? That's all it is, my dear. Now, your magic slippers will take you home in two seconds. Oh, that's... That's too wonderful to be true. Only it's it's going to be so hard to really say goodbye. I, I love you all so much. Goodbye, Tin Man. Oh, don't cry. You rust so dreadfully. Now I know I have a heart. It's breaking. Goodbye, Lion. Oh, I know it isn't right, but... I, I'm going to miss the way you used to holler for help before you found your courage. I never would have found it if it hadn't been for you. And Scarecrow, I think I'll miss you most of all. Goodbye, dear friend. Are you ready now? Yes, I'm ready. Say goodbye, Toto. <laughs> Close your eyes and think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place Dorothy, Dorothy, child, oh, wake up. Please wake no up. No place like home. No place like home. It's Aunt Em, darling. Oh, Henry, look, she's opening her eyes. Oh, Auntie Em, it is you. Yes, darling. Hello there. Can I come in? I just dropped by because I heard the little girl got caught in the big cyclone. Well, got a I... bad knock in the head, Professor Marvel, but she's coming around now. We, we thought for a minute she was going to leave us. Sure had us worried, Dorothy. <gasps> Why, you remember me, your old pal, Hunk? Oh. And me, Hickory? You couldn't forget my face now, could you? Zeke, I, I must have been dreaming. I, I was in a place far away, and, and you, and you, and you, you were all there. We were? But you couldn't have been, could you? Oh, we dream lots of silly things, dear, when we're... No, Aunt Em, this was a real, truly live place. And all I kept saying to everybody was, I want to go home. And they sent me home. <laughs> oh, Toto, you believe me, even if nobody else does. Of course we believe you, Dorothy. Oh, anyway, Toto, we're home. And this is my room. And, and you're all here. And I'm never going to leave here ever, ever again. Because I love you all. And, oh, Annie M., there's no place like home. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where 
troubles melt like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops That's where you Goodbye to the Wizard of Oz and congratulations to our lovely star, Judy Garland, and those remarkable characters from the land of Oz. Judy, we can't tell you how much we appreciate your giving up Christmas with your family to appear on the Lux Radio Theater. Oh, thank you, Bill, but I didn't really. You see, I brought my three-year-old, my four-year-old daughter, Liza. It says three in the script, but she's really four. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'd like to meet her. I'm afraid you're too late, cowardly lion. Liza fell in love with a scarecrow. He's teaching her to dance. Where is he? Let him put up his fist. <laughs> I'll fight him with one paw tied behind my back. <laughs> Imagine only three uh, or four years old, <laughs> and there's two men fighting over her already. Well, that's because she's a Lux girl, Bill, just like her ma. Well, mm -hmm. I can see you're bringing her up right, Judy. Now what are you girls going to do? Go home and eat more turkey? Oh, no, positively no more today. But I promised Liza if she was a good girl, I'd take her to the movie tomorrow. Well, why not take her to see Esther Williams in the Pagan Love Song? metro golden Mayor's new musical. Well, that sounds good. Liza loves singing and dancing. Then be sure she listens in next week, because we'll have another holiday special. Two of Hollywood's brightest musical comedy stars, Ginger Rogers and George Murphy. And we'll present them in metro golden Mayor's recent musical screen success, The Barclays of Broadway. Oh, well, we won't miss it, Bill. Good night. Good night, Judy. And may your new year be a very happy one. Who is this Hollywood star? One of three beautiful sisters. She's written a best-selling book on charm. She's the glamorous mother of four lovely daughters. A glamorous mother of four? Uh -huh. How about Joan Bennett? All <laughs> right. And the girls are always as perfectly groomed as Joan herself. Of course, she insists on Lux care for all their washables as well as her own. Everything from dainty party dresses to two-year-old Shelley's gay cotton play clothes. Hollywood stars love gentle Lux because it keeps colors new-looking so much longer. Take a tip from Joan Bennett. Get a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. Give all the children's Christmas washables that lovely Lux look. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in hoping that you've all had a joyous Christmas. And be sure to join us again next Monday night when we'll present Ginger Rogers and George Murphy in The Barclays of Broadway. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.